Hey guys, Anthony here for D News. I am in Oakland, California. I am at the headquarters of uh, Back to the Roots with the co-founder, Alex. You guys make some very interesting products here. You've done two so far. Tell me a little bit about your products and your philosophy. I uh, started this whole thing up out of college, actually. It was uh, about two and a half years ago. We found a way to grow gourmet mushrooms on coffee waste. Mm -hmm. I uh, was actually going into investment banking in New York and, and uh, Nick Hill, the other co-founder, was going into consulting. Bullets dodge. Yes. <laughs> yes, from what I hear, from what, what do I hear from my buddies? I guess I did dodge a bullet. Uh, no, I mean, we just got fascinated by uh, the fact that you could take waste and grow food on it. Never had grown food myself, yeah. didn't know anything about agriculture, the food movement, anything, or sustainability, really. I just tried this out in my fraternity. We tried out a few buckets. Uh, one of the buckets ended up growing and we took that bucket to the Berkeley Whole Foods store. It took a couple months, but then the buyer, uh, Randy DeCommon, was like, if you guys figure this out, I'm gonna blow you up in my stores. <laughs> He's like, I love this. This is the most innovative stuff I've seen in produce. Yeah. And that's really when we ended up giving up our jobs and ended up uh, creating a mushroom kit, which you see, see here. You put this in your kitchen and in 10 days, you get to grow a full crop of mushrooms. So this is, this is fascinating to me because I'm the same way. Like, I would never think to grow my own food. How is it, what makes it so easy to grow mushrooms in a box instantaneously like this? And why don't we as people know how easy it is to grow our own food? Yeah, I mean, for us, it was that mindset that I think allowed us to look at this in a completely different way and in this case when we first started the company it was looking at mushroom farming mm -hmm. from a different light. We, we knew nothing about mushrooms, knew nothing about agriculture and uh, realized that if uh, normally mushrooms are grown on, on cellulose, so cellulose rich substances like hardwoods and, and uh, sawdust, oak chip, biologically coffee waste and coffee grounds uh, can be replaced as that, so it can be used for it. I think coming at it from a different angle, once again, uh, it was able for us to be like, hey, I think if we grew one bucket out of my fraternity, there's ways to, to replicate this. And this this got really successful. You guys are in uh, tons of different stores now. I've seen you in Whole Foods. You guys are in some Home Depots and stuff too. You guys are like in a lot of places. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been fun to see some of the, the, the I think, awareness for the product, and mm -hmm. it's such a unique, random product that uh, it has allowed us to expand in a lot of different retail channels, which you normally wouldn't see in a product, like a consumer product, because yeah. we're in uh, Whole Foods, but then we're also in Nordstrom and uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, but also Home Depot. That's so, so. that's so like surreal to me. That's so interesting. So, I mean, I think it goes back to this movement yeah. is just, it's just starting out. And I think people want to grow their own food. People want to, I mean, people are into local food and they want to know where their food comes from. So what better way than growing it yourself? Yeah, so this, this became super successful and then you guys started work on your second product which uh, you put on Kickstarter, which is, which is this fish tank right here. So it's a fish tank in a garden. Yeah, <laughs> self-cleaning fish tank with a growing kit up top. This is like a completely self-contained ecosystem going on right here, huh? Yeah, so for us, this also started, I think as, as we, we started learning more and more about the food movement, mm -hmm. We started touring different farms that we just became, I mean, fascinated with. And it was uh, aquaponics farms. Mm -hmm. And uh, what this is, it's an aquaponics garden. And normally you'll see it in big industrial settings where you have fish at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And that fish, all the fish waste, which is basically the poo and the pee from, right. from the fish, and it's, it's really just ammonia. Mm -hmm. All of that ammonia gets pumped upwards in these big farms. So all of it gets pumped upwards. And that's the only fertilizer that the plants used for them to grow. And the wow. cool thing is that the plants themselves are then cleaning the water and then right. pump it back down for the fish. So you, all you have to do is feed the fish, the fish feed the plants, the plants clean the water, bring it back down. So it's this amazing ecosystem that big farms were doing. So for us, it was a really cool project to do on a side mm -hmm. to say, hey, let's make this so people can do it in their kitchen. Is that possible? Why haven't we seen this in people's homes before? I mean, that's a great question. I mean, I think even for us, when we looked at the, 
the systems at large, we never made the connection immediately. We were, we thought it was really pretty cool to, mm -hmm. to, to do this in a big setting and it took a couple months for us to make a connection to, hey, why don't we make this smaller? Can, can people start enjoying this at home? And I think there's always that question of, are people gonna wanna grow their own food at home? And I think we had that mindset once again, a different, we came at it from a different angle. We realized that by taking a product or, or a growing system like growing mushrooms mm -hmm. that isn't necessarily seen it as a product that can be put in a, you know, a person's home, but if you, if you combine ease of use and beautiful design, and uh, then you can get products in the kitchen. So I think for us, we came out in that angle and uh, appreciate it, because that's yeah. definitely, we spent months uh, working with aquaponics experts as well as industrial designers. We worked with Daylight Design up in San Francisco uh, to be able to come up with something uh, that was as simple as, as possible, but we worked on hundreds of iterations. I mean, it was a lot of a lot of work in the back end. Yeah, I'm sure. So uh, you you put just one fish in the tank, mm -hmm. and then how many plants can you grow? Uh, how this is this is basil right here. How yep. much basil can I get from one fish? So we recommend one fish because of PETA regulations too. We want to make sure we abide sure. by by those. Um, for aquaponics, if you look at big aquaponics farms, you actually can. Uh, put quite a bit of fish in there because it really is how many nutrients do you want to be able to have the plants uptake. So in our case, we're putting one beta in there and beta uh, beta fish don't like to hang out with other right. fish. So uh, in this case, we only have one. The Kickstarter is over. You guys are funded. This is going into production. If people want to get their hands on one of these or on one of your mushroom kits, where can they do so? Uh, the pre-order and the, the first rollout will be in Nordstrom and Whole Foods. Cool. Followed by Home Depot. Wow. And uh, you can find the mushroom gardens uh, basically anywhere where you shop, which is one of the cool things. Awesome. Alex, thanks so much, man. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Cool. Yeah. So if you guys want more information, we'll definitely put all of those links down below this video. And be sure to subscribe and follow us on Twitter for more DNews updates.